guys. Um, okay, we've finished the chrome. Um, sorry, eating. Um, we've finished the chrome, as you just think. So uh, next, uh, I think I'll do the background because there's a lot of um, there's a lot of stuff that goes over the background, all these little motion lines and that up. Uh, so it makes sense to do the background now rather than later, otherwise everything's going to get a bit tricky. So um, we need to mask off all the chrome and all the parts where the, the red demon dude is going to be. To, to do that, I use this stuff. Loads of people have asked me what this clear masking stuff is that I use. What's that? I don't know if you can see that. Ultra Mask by Art Tool. Great stuff. Um, about these little rolls. Um, but yeah, it's really good stuff. Cuts easily. So um, you can cut it without cutting the surface of what you're painting. As long as you're careful. Uh, transparent, solvent proof, yada yada yada. Very good. A couple of people. Uh, who I talk to airbrush, they've had some issues with it leaving the glue on the surface of what they're doing but um, I've, I've never had any issues and I mean I've left some of this stuff on a project for you know six months in the past and, and it's come off okay so, um, so I recommend that, really good stuff so we'll cover this with this and uh, we'll mask off all the red area Hi all. Um, right, uh, we're going to continue with the Appetite for Destruction guitar. Almost there now. Um, just got the, the Demon Guy's skin to do and then some black and white motion lines and that all over it. Um, I've been getting a few requests um, to show you in detail what I'm doing rather than the time lapse stuff which is all well and good, you know, you can still see what I'm doing, but it's going by too quick. Um, the reason I do the time lapse stuff is because there's nothing more boring than watching paint dry. Um, so uh, it, it gets it out of the way quickly then, but as some of you have requested so for me to slow down a bit, I'll, uh, I'll show you a, a bit in real time. Um, so I think what we'll do is this section today. This top arm here and this little flying skull thing that's part of it. It's, it's chopped off by the shoulder there, so that's one section. So, um, the original, you can see that, it's a bit of a funny red. Um, I don't know, it's, it's more of an orange than a red. Um, but anyway, I, um, I wanted to experiment before I just slapped on some paint. I wanted to try and make sure that I could get a close match. I mean, I'm no paint matching expert, far from it. Um, I just get it as close as I can and touch wood. I've been lucky so far. Um, but yeah, I, I've sprayed some tests. Um, just got a scrap bit of paper. I don't know if you can see that. Sort the light out. There you go, how's that look? So first one here, we've just got a, a transparent yellow base and uh, and then I've put some transparent fire red over the top. This is auto air by the way. Uh, the middle one there was transparent yellow 
circle again and then transparent red oxide over the top. I don't know if the camera's brought that out, but this one's quite orangey. This one's got a lot more brown in it because of course the red oxide is a, a more brown colour. Uh, and then lastly, yellow circle again and transparent cherry red over the top. Uh, that came out way too red, it was far too dark. I mean, I, I thought the fire red would be the one to go with, but I wanted to just do a little tester first just to make sure I got it right. And I was right, the fire red over the yellow, it comes out quite orangey as of course of the yellow base. Uh, if you just did it straight over the white, of course it would come out a lot more red. Um, so we'll go with that. We'll, uh, we'll mask off this using trusty old ultra mask. Um, and then we'll spray the whole area yellow. And then uh, we'll go in with the fire red over the top for the shading. And then, uh, and then you've got the darker colours on there. So uh, let's mask it off first. There you go, it's all masked up. Um, as you've just seen, covered the area with a bit of ultra mask. Very carefully cut it out. Uh, some of you have asked me how to cut uh, the ultra mask without cutting the surface of the guitar or whatever you're painting. Um, there is no secret to it. Um, it's, it's just practice. That's all it boils down to. Um, after a while you get to know the right amount of pressure. I mean, I still cut through now and then. You know, I'll remove the mask and notice that I've left a little cut line. It's, um, it's one of those things that happens. It's, it's not good when it happens. Um, because the clear, I find the clear can seep into where the cut is sometimes. And then after a little while, you know, you know after it's been cleared after a little while, uh, the cut mark shows in the clear, you know, a, a dip in the clear. Um, so it's not good to do it, you need to avoid it if you can. Um, but yeah, that's covered in Ultra Mask, I've cut out the hand and the little dude there. Uh, covered the rest of the guitar over, just in case, because I don't want yellow over, I mean I've got an extraction system up here, but uh, I don't want yellow over spray to go all over the guitar, so I've just got these j cloths they're like kitchen rags. Um, they're not stuck down, they're just laid over the guitar. Uh, the only bit where they're stuck down is around the edge of the ultra mask here. So it just stops the overspray from going on it. Um, I mean, I'm not going to be spraying enough for it to go around the back or anything like that. And, uh, and I'll turn the extraction on. Um, but uh, it just gives it that extra level of protection. Because, of course, a lot of work's gone into this and you don't want it to be spoiled by five minutes of stupidity so uh, right so now we've done that we're gonna cover the whole thing with um, transparent yellow that one there just auto air up and spanky um, I won't reduce it uh, just as it comes out the bottle drag this light over here so I can see what I'm doing. I've gone now. <laughs> uh, for this, no detail work or anything involved here. So um, I'm just going to use my Iwata HP CH airbrush. Um, this one's got a 0.3 need light. I've got another one a 0.2. And then of course my Harder and Steambeck with a 0.15 for for the real detailed stuff, but this one got 0.3. So we just flood that area in with some yellow. Turn this on. 